So this was one of the comments from my previous video, and I thought it did a really good job showcasing an example of how something seems seemingly impossible until you learn to do it. So I also reposted that on my Instagram to sort of see where you guys were at generally. And most of you guys said that you were around level three. So the blind solvers that look up to the multi blind solvers going like, how the bloody hell do you do that? Which was me quite a while ago, but I was there as well. And the other levels above that, below that. So I thought I'd make a multi-blind tutorial slash guide because I haven't made one before, I think. First of all, um, I think starting out, make sure you're using letter pair words first and not just like brute force memorizing the letters on the cube because it's technically possible to do that, but it will take um, a very long time. It's very inefficient. You will hate life, so don't do it. If you're still struggling with certain letter pairs that are like weird and you spend like 20 seconds coming up with a word and you just give in and just memorize the letters as is, you can consider using a space repetition flashcard system like Anki to sort of go through those letter pairs and sort of draw them in your head every day just to make sure that you have something and you don't spend 30 seconds coming up with a new word. And once again, I'll go back to memo again shortly, but the next thing I want to cover is memorizing and executing using the same order. Um, so in my case, for three blind, I normally ex memorize corners, then edges, followed by edges, then corners. But for multi-blind, I do edge, sorry, I do corners, edges, and also corners, edges, for both memorization and execution. Um, edges, corners, edges, corners still works okay as well. Reason being is that since you for the most part doing long-term memory for the entire thing. I think it's just like a bit more straightforward to kind of have everything sort of like in one big chunk for each, for both memorization and execution. So just be sure to look up ways to deal with um, parody and that kind of stuff if you're doing that, just to make sure it still works. Cause I think OPOP, -OP, I think it's like the same thing pretty much. M2, I think you have to learn something different. 4-3 style, you have to learn something a little bit different as well, but just make sure you learn what you have to do for those. So what you want to do with those words is essentially create a story out of it and stash those stories around um, some rooms or locations. So this is known as the journey method, method of loci, Roman rooms or whatever. And this was invented by, I don't know, some people like a long, long time ago before like writing was even a thing. So a very long time ago, and I used it to memorize a lot of stuff from like where the best fishing sites are to where they can go without invading all the tribes or something. I could be making this up, but I feel like something, just important information they need for their survival. And in our case, we're just using this to um, memorize a bunch of Rubik's cubes blindfolded, but it works pretty well. And it's how stuff like this is possible. Okie dokie, so I have a scramble that I provided for you and this actually looks pretty easy but I'll just showcase how I memorize this cube using the memory palace technique or whatever you want to call it. So starting with the corners, um, and I guess my first location, I probably need to take this camera out so I can show you what I mean. Excuse the abomination that is my messy roof but uh, okay, let's see. So we have... I hope I don't drop this, this is like a thousand dollars. D-O, so um, I have a dodo. So I'm gonna use this shelf here as my first, um, I guess, location in this room, this literal room. Uh, D-O, so dodo, G-M. So he's like gaming, so I think of him holding a joystick. So um, I think on the top of the shelf, there's a dodo holding a joystick. He's like gaming or something. This camera's really heavy. Um, I, I'll break the here, T, um, IT, um, I guess you could maybe think of a computer, but I have that for PC. I have a really strange word for this, like, I think of, you know the meme where people would do, like, this, something about, like, Italians, like, I have Italian gesture for that, so, like, I think, like, this hand gesture, so he's gaming, and all of a sudden he just takes his hand and does this for some reason, and, um, L, J, so I think of like lunch, so like a J sound as a G-E. So 
I need to swap hands. <laughs> so, oh god. So, up on here, there is a dodo who is, uh, I forgot the who is gaming. He suddenly does like this thing, and then, uh, what happens after that? Then he just like suddenly does this lunge for some reason on my shelf. And we'll just pick another corner. Let's just choose this corner here. So I tend to split edges into two parts because edges tend to be around 12 letters long. So like three words per location. Corners tend to be roughly four, which can kind of chuck in one place. So anyway, just outside this closet area or inside, whatever you feel like doing. Um, I want to go through the edges. So we have VG. Um, I thought of something else straight away, but I want to keep this PG friendly. So I'll think of like a vagabond. So um, specifically, I think of like a samurai. Like I think there's this manga based on like that famous Japanese samurai from like the Edo era or something. So I just think of that dude and we have JL. So I know there's this type of uh, lolly called uh, Joel's. I don't think that's like just an Australian thing. But as you can see, this is pretty personalized stuff. You might have completely different people or things for these, but this is just an example. So we have the vagabond or samurai dude chucking his lollies into his mouth or jowls, as I know them as. And an HM, I just think ham. So we chuck jowls and then like this piece of ham, like the circular salami. Is salami and ham, is no, they're different things, I think. I really don't know. Anyway, my hand is dying. I mean, my arm is dying. And next we have NW. So I pick a new location for this. Let's just do the table so I can <laughs> give my arm a rest. I'm gonna duck down in case you can't see me, but here we have my sexy Yeti mic. And more importantly, we have a um, NW. You can just think of like news or like a newspaper. So there's a newspaper down here somewhere. And after that we have EC. There's a newspaper on an electric chair. Sometimes you can kind of break the letters down into like initials or something like that. So newspaper on an electric chair. And that's the end because this is actually an easy scramble, but usually there'd be like another word afterwards. So to try to see if you can recall exactly what I just told you about. So first of all, the shelf. Ignore the um, abomination that is the messiness I have. So first of all, we have the um, dodo, who is... Why am I having trouble with this? I'm like teaching you guys this. I should know this better. The dodo. What's the dodo doing? The dodo is gaming, and he does the Italian gesture thing, and then he lunges for some reason. And as you can see, I'm kind of going through the cube again. This is pretty normal. Um, some people do it like a couple of times, sort of depending where the cube is, if you're doing like a lot more than like say two. And after that, we go to the closet area, which is the second location. And we have the, the bag of bond, who's eating the chopping jowls in his mouth and the lollies. And he is also eating ham for some reason after that. And on the table, I didn't make that hole by the way, that was my brother, just want to clarify that in case you were going to ask. On this table here, why is it so blue? We have um, the, oh yeah, there's like a, like a newspaper on an electric chair for some reason, and the newspaper's getting zapped. Or you can like put a person maybe, like Isaac Newton getting destroyed by the electric chair, um, depending on what you feel like. And then you pretty much just go through that and solve the cube, which you probably know what that looks like already if you follow my channel. And we'd essentially just do that for like however many cubes there are, except the very last one, which we tend to just solve like a normal three blind cube, maybe with an extra review or something just to play it a bit safer. Cause when doing multi blind, you pretty much always want to go for accuracy. The other thing I want to quickly mention is that you kind of want to have some sort of reviewing system. So if you're doing three cubes, can memorize the first one, then go through the second one, and then review the first one again, kind of like what I did just before, then the second one again, and then just solve the last one like a normal three blind cube. And if you have, say, I don't know, six maybe, 
you can maybe just do like maybe a one two we do one two then three four three four five six five six and go through one to six once or twice and then do the last one like a three blind so just having some kind of system if you're so confused i recommend looking at some of the top blind solvers and seeing what they do for like their review system you might have to memorize so you might have to review things a bit more perhaps because like i think graham can just like memorize eight cubes and just like review them all in one go again like i can't do that yet but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and it brought you some hot value and like and subscribe for more videos and uh what else am i gonna plug subscribe to the channel my newsletter and bye